My name's Keisha and this is Tegan and thanks for joining us on the education station today with the Blank Park Zoo. So today we have a very special guest and you can probably see him down on the floor here with Tegan and I and his name is Grop and he is our giant Flemish rabbit, or at least one of them that we have here at Blank Park Zoo. Um, and he is one of the animals that we actually usually take on uh, programs and do on-site programs with here at the zoo as well. And we love teaching people about um, different species and uh, pets and animals and animals that shouldn't be pets and all of the above. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about Brock. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, please comment that below and then Tegan will be um, following those comments on her phone here and then she'll help ask some of those questions um, to me and I hopefully I can get those answered for you. So while we um, wait for some comments to come in, I'll just go ahead and talk a little bit about Groff in general. So Groff here, like I said before, is a giant Flemish rabbit, which means he is very large. Yes, he weighs about 14 pounds. Um, generally speaking, giant Flemish can weigh anything between 15 to 22 pounds. Um, just in general, so they are very, very large, um, and they will, they look kind of chubby like Grop does here, but he is a very healthy weight at 14 pounds. Um, we make sure to keep him nice and healthy through um, his years here with us by giving him the correct diet, which is also very important just for any animal, but especially for uh, rabbits. So when we talk about rabbits, a lot of people actually think that they are rodents, um, which is not too far off. Uh, Rabbits here are something we like to call a lagomorph, which is a cousin to the rodent. Um, the main difference between rodents and lagomorphs is their diet. So uh, more often than not, a rodent is going to be uh, more of an omnivore and our lagomorphs are gonna be uh, pretty much 100% uh, herbivores. So when I say herbivore, I mean that Grop eats a lot of vegetation and um, that's gonna be pretty much it. He's not gonna eat any meat or anything like that. It wouldn't be healthy for his digestive system. Um, so Grop gets a lot of that vegetation here at the zoo, so he gets a ton of romaine lettuce and I think he got some raspberries today and then he gets some, he had some strawberries yesterday so he gets a lot of fun food to eat, but he also gets to have um, his pelleted diet, which is just very small, and I'm sure most of you have seen it. It's just the same thing that we feed our other rabbits, um, and it's just a high concentrate of all those nutrients that they would be getting um, and that they need to help and stay healthy, excuse me. <laughs> so um, on top of that, not only do they need um, that vegetation and those pellets, but they also need to have hay. So um, Grop here gets hay 24-7, um, so he's never without that hay um, in his enclosure and around him. So um, right now we didn't get a bunch out for him currently, but we're only gonna be here for a few minutes and then he's gonna go back in his um, crate to get him back to his enclosure and he has some hay in there and some food for him too. So you talked about what they um, what they eat. Yeah. About how much does Grop eat? Does he eat a lot more than a regular rabbit? Yeah, so he does eat about double the amount of a regular rabbit. Um, so we feed Grop about twice a day, which is not 100% necessary. Um, they just enjoy it, so we are allowed to um, give them that opportunity. Um, so you could feed your rabbit once a day, just making sure that they get all that they need during that time. Uh, but we give him probably... I would say it's close to like two yogurt cups full of all of his food. So not just his concentrate, so not just that pellet, but he also gets um, his like leaves and stuff mixed in there as well. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Shelly here wants to know if he can jump very far. Yeah. So um, Grop here isn't the best at jumping super far, and he tends to um, move kind of slowly and just relax most of the time. Um, but if he wanted to, he could move pretty quickly enough for us to have to jog after him a little bit. But that's pretty much about it. Um, these rabbits are usually pretty more um, relaxed and docile and just kind of like to hang out. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's see if we've got any more questions. Yeah. Ooh, we have a comment that he's very beautiful. He is, thank you. Yes, <laughs> awesome. All right, so um, speaking a little bit more of like that, like lagomorph and rodent thing, yes. um, how we can kind of tell that they're kind of cousins is by their teeth. 
So our lagomorphs are going to have those very large incisors that will continuously erupt through their entire lives, which means that they're not going to have baby teeth that kind of fall out and then they grow, grow adult teeth like us, like we do. Um, their teeth are just going to continue to grow and grow and grow, which is very cool um, in, in a sense, but it also can be a problem um, with our animals that we have at home. So um, having those teeth like that, they need to have something to gnaw on. Um, they're going to naturally be uh, animals that tend to chew a lot on things and they get their hands and their little feet on um, things mm -hmm. that we may not want to be chewed on at home. So our shoes and our clothes and things like that, um, they're very, very good at kind of shredding um, like knits and, and uh, rubber and things like that very easily. Um, but they need, what they need for those teeth are like wood. So we give them a bunch of like sticks and large chunks of wood that they're able to gnaw on and kind of wear those teeth down continuously throughout their lives so that they'll never get too long. Because if they do get too long, they won't be able to eat their food. Yeah. Awesome. Julie here wants to know how old Graf is and then how long he would live. Yeah, so Graf oh. is, uh, I think he's about four, and they're going to live to be about eight to ten years old, um, just depending on the individual rabbit itself. Um, and yeah, that's about how old he is now. Awesome. Tanya here is wondering if he lives with any other friends in his enclosure and what is his favorite type of hay? All right, so um, he does not live with any of any other rabbit right now. Um, he does have a brother, and his name is Hagrid, and they live um, actually right next to each other, uh, but they don't get along very much. I'm sure some of you can understand with siblings. Um, so they prefer to have their own space. So he has actually a very large enclosure inside and also um, an area that he can go outside as well during the day when it's very nice like today is. Um, and at his favorite hay, um, we give these guys Timothy hay. Okay. Yeah. Um, out of all the different things that he's able to eat, uh, does he have a favorite food? Mm, that's a great question. So, um, he really likes uh, fruits. I'm not sure which fruit is his absolute favorite, but usually um, he's very, very excited in the morning to get his food, and he normally knocks it out of my hand before I even have a chance to get it in his bowl. <laughs> um, but yeah, he really enjoyed that strawberry and the raspberry today, so I would say probably one of those two. One of those. Awesome. Well, do rabbits, mm -hmm. do they have claws? Yeah, so they're going to have nails. Um, they're not sharp like a cat or anything like that, but they can get long. Um, and they're kind of more like um, blunt like a dog nail. And they do need to be cut and shaved down every once in a while too. Um, I know that sometimes um, you can keep like concrete blocks um, if they have a large enough um, area, they can kind of scratch on it themselves. They do tend to like to scratch and um, play with things, so that could be helpful to help file those down. Uh, but you also need to probably cut them every once in a while too. Very cool. Why do rabbits have really big ears, really long ears? Yeah, so um, rabbits have large ears because um, they are prey animals. Um, so usually when you look at an animal and you see their eyes, if an animal has eyes on the sides of their head, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time they're going to be a prey animal. Um, and prey animals need to have uh, very strong senses to stay away from those predators that might want to um, have them as a snack out in the wild. So his ears help are like huge satellites that help him to funnel in um, different sounds and noises that are around him. And he's actually able to move those ears kind of independently too. Yeah. Very cool. All right, Denise has a question here. Um, do they run fast or just lay around? So um, <laughs> he was just hopping around a little earlier. Um, he was probably only hopping for about a minute to a minute and a half. Um, and they kind of just like to explore. So that's mainly what he's going to be doing is exploring. And when we take him outside in the grass, he'll be searching for those clovers because that's kind of his favorite thing to eat while we're outside. Um, but most of the time, he's going to just be relaxing and enjoying his time. Very yeah. cool. Do you find rabbits like Grab anywhere in the wild? That's a great question. So, um, no. He is 100% domesticated. Um, we, um, there's not a for sure 
um, like ancestor or individual ancestor of this animal. Um, currently, uh, he's just going to be a mix of a bunch of different types of rabbits. Um, the most common one that we definitely know is um, the Belgium rabbit, and they were actually brought, um, the, these giant rabbits were actually brought to the United States in 1890, um, and then they were brought over for uh, the fur and meat trade, um, but due to their bone density, they're not, you know, always the best for that now, and they're just super cute. So people do have these guys as pets. Um, it's not super common, but it is something that happens. Um, these guys take a lot of work, though. Um, it's kind of like having a dog. Um, they'll need to go and get vaccinations at the vet. Um, they'll need to be seen by a vet a lot. They'll need to have a lot more room than our smaller rabbits that we have as pets as well. Um, most of the time, these guys are free roaming in your house, which if you heard me before talk about how they love to nibble on things, you have to be cautious about that, too. Okay. Um, Denise has a question here. Does he have children, nieces, or nephews? Um, so no, not currently, um, and probably uh, never will, but that's totally fine. We just want to make sure that we're not um, doing anything that will involve any type of breeding of animals that is not a need for the wild. So currently we do have animals that um, we do have breeding programs here at the zoo for, but they all have SSPs, which are species survival programs, which means that all of our breeding that we're doing is to make sure that those species stay alive. At, um, yeah. Good. Um, is salt important for bunnies? Is salt important for bunnies? Um, that's a good question. I am actually not 100% sure on that one. Um, currently, we don't have any like salt licks or anything like that for our rabbits, and I, I have not heard of anybody using salt licks for their rabbits. Um, rabbits do have a very finicky stomach, and um, the way they digest their food mm -hmm. is a little bit different too. Um, so we call them hind gut fermenters which means that um, they're going to do a lot of their fermenting um, in the hind gut. So these guys are actually something that we call coprophagic, which means they actually eat their poop, um, which is fine. I know um, I've got a lot of questions before about people having rabbits at home, and they're like, oh my gosh, my rabbit's eating its poop. Is it sick? No, it's actually healthy. If you see your rabbit not eating your poop, um, or if you notice that you have two types of poop in your enclosures at home, that's probably a good sign that your rabbit isn't doing too great digestively. Um, so that poop that they eat is actually a little bit softer and mushier than um, the poop that you normally find, like the little pellets around the house. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, just mainly sticking to that um, herbivore diet and making sure that they have that Timothy hay at all times, you should be pretty good. Okay. Let's see, so we talked about how Grob has a brother, Hagrid, and they're boys. Mm -hmm. How would you tell if a rabbit is a boy or a girl? Is there a way to tell by looking at them? Yeah, so they do um, have like external, external genitalia, and that's pretty much how you're going to be able to tell um, a male from a female. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Can they use a litter box if they roam around your house? They can. So they actually have litter boxes in their enclosure. Uh, Grab's not too great about using his, <laughs> which is fine because we're able to clean that up um, here and not have any problems with that. Um, his brother, Hagrid, is actually very good about using his litter box. It just kind of depends on the rabbit and um, how well you train that rabbit. So yes, you can train your rabbits at home to use the litter box um, and uh, yeah, you can probably find some different ways on how to do that and uh, through a little bit of research. Very cool. Um, here's a fun question. Julia was wondering, is there a name for the poop that they eat? Is there a name for the poop that they eat? Hmm, I'm not 100% sure. Oh, that's something <laughs> interesting. I feel like she maybe knows something. <laughs> she probably does. <laughs> how many years do bunnies live up to? We've talked about how long he lives. Do other bunnies have different lifespans? Yeah, so it just kind of depends on um, the breed of the rabbit. Um, sometimes they can live a little older than like 15-ish, but um, usually it's kind of a good marker of ten, 8 to 10. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're about wrapped up with questions. Okay. Is well, there anything else that we needed to share? Um, well, just before we head out, I just want to make sure that everybody um, 
understands that uh, animals can be really fun to have as pets sometimes, but to really do your research when it comes to um, finding that new animal for your home. Um, look at you know the size of your uh, the area that you have for them. Make sure that that animal works best for your family and your family's dynamic um, and make sure that you are able to um, give them the, the care that they need. Uh, especially with this guy, he's definitely, like I said before, going to be have to be going to those vets and he is considered an exotic animal in the pet world. So um, anything other than a dog or a cat is considered an exotic. So when searching for a vet, you have to make sure that they're willing to look at those types of things too. But other than that, if there is no more questions, I just want to thank you guys so much for tuning in with us today. And we should be back on Thursday with uh, Christina and Jessica, and they will bring another special guest for you guys at 1045. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Bye.